Hello and welcome back to Discover with Spinetti. I'm your host, Dr. Halim Spinetti, and today we have a very special guest. Her name is Martha Hawk, and she is, by my standards, a perfectionist. And if anyone knows me, I'm a severe perfectionist, and she is a level above that. So without further ado, let's get started. Martha, please introduce yourself. Uh, hello, I am Martha Huck. I am the founder of Hedgeman Berkeley. We are a full service design and build firm. Okay, so she's very humble. And the reason I say that is because if you check out her Instagram, and her Instagram tag will be right here. Uh, this is gonna be on YouTube, by the way, as well. Oh. Yeah, this is gonna be on YouTube. Um, and uh, you can also check all her work on her Instagram, and she has also a Facebook page uh, called Hedgeford and Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Martha, before I get started, mm -hmm. what got you started in this whole process? Um, so I was working as an engineer uh -huh. and I was there for eight years and the environment just started to get less and less progressive and the morale started going down and I used to work with visionaries and that sort of atmosphere just kind of started going away. Okay. So I sat there one day at my gray cubicle desk and said, is this literally uh -huh. what I'm going to do for the next 30 years? Uh -huh. And I thought I have to do something else, anything else. So I had a love for renovating and I thought there's so many terrible contractors out there and <laughs> designers who think they can design but can't. So there has to be a better way of helping people connect with good designers and good contractors and, and smooth that process out. So one day I just quit and I thought, I'm just gonna start my own company because I told my boss, if you cannot create a progressive environment for me to work in, I will build a company that can. Wow. That's what I did. If that's not gonna motivate you, I don't know what is. <laughs> now, what gave you that push? So, so okay, so you're saying that you found yourself stagnant and yes. you look at yourself, you're like, okay, how can I do this for the next 38 mm -hmm. years or so, okay? Mm -hmm. And you're like, I can't do this. Yeah. What made you go into the, 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 the basic, the career choice that you decided to go into now? Because you didn't just go into just engineering. Yes. yes. You decided to take on art, which, yes. is, which is a whole different realm altogether. Mm -hmm. Like usually engineers and art don't mix. That's, right. that's why they have them in different buildings yes. and universities. Yeah, that's right. So, <laughs> so what, what got you to marry those? Um, I actually, I don't know, but I think that for myself, I've always been very moved by my environment and I understand the impact it has on your psychological well-being. And I'm a firm believer that in, in mind over matter, and if you believe you can do it, you will find a way of doing it. So creating a, you know, a, a renovation that, I don't know, kind of creates that space for somebody to have it as an inspiring space allows them to be, I don't know, maybe happier. And I just feel that if I can provide that, that's my way of giving back to them to be the best version of themselves. Wow. <laughs> I just got goosebumps. I literally just got goosebumps. That was really good. That's actually awesome. So yeah. did you did you ever, so were you ever so intrigued with interior design that you're, no. 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 Um, no, so, I did not think I was going to do this. No. no. Okay, so so just to give a little bit of background, so you studied engineering. Yeah, I'm a mechanical engineer. You're a mechanical, mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer. Okay, and right. now what you do mainly is you do renovations, yes. you do interior and exterior, mm -hmm. you do from small projects to big projects, right. and I've seen your work, mm -hmm. and it is nothing shy of phenomenal. It's okay. Um, you are, yeah, it's all right. It's, it's, it's okay. not bad. Um, you are by far one of the best, if not the best, I've ever actually seen yeah. the work because you, because it takes, I mean, anyone can just do innovation, mm -hmm. but it takes a level of actual detail mm -hmm. or attention detail for you actually to surpass that level. Yes. Um, yeah. What, so, so with mechanical engineering, obviously they don't train you to develop that eye. Do you have like a family background of, so what? So you don't have anyone in your family that has any influence on you with regards to? They're all engineers. They're all engineers. Yeah. So, so who who influenced you? Into going into to get into yeah to get into specifically to do what you're doing, which is interior reconstruction and design. Yeah, I just um, fell into it. It isn't that I thought that I could be this the best in construction. I really have just set out to create the greatest company to work for. It just happens that we're good at renos. Um, 
I believe that we solve problems and that's what engineers are made to do. So if you can create a space that seamlessly works for somebody's life or where they work or whatever it is, um, that changes them and then you just solved a problem that they had and that for me is the real reward wow. making things beautiful that's just for fun <laughs> wow. but there's a lot of things that i started studying there's a lot of details of why this room affects me but this room doesn't why this detail does and that one doesn't you know um does this have a reveal and that's what makes the material stand out how are these materials layered together by really almost analyzing of the way that all these facets come together mm -hmm. that's enabled me to like when i design i already have these things because i've figured it out like that's just what i've done it's just how i work that's how my brain works wow yeah <laughs> okay so you were interested in interior design you're also interested in problem solving mm -hmm. so that's what i'm getting from you yes and also interested in inspiring people yeah. So you and you got your engineering background mm -hmm. and you mix all those together. Mm -hmm. And then also because you're very brilliant, as I can tell, <laughs> um, you are very um, you're you know what to look for yeah. in order to make that impact. That's right. That's right. And not a lot of people have that. Mm -hmm. So so then tell me. I'm sure you've, you're very cool, calm and collected, which is awesome. Okay. <laughs> Especially in this field, mm -hmm. which can like, and I know you're under a lot of stress. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to that in a sec. <laughs> Um, what have been the uh, some challenges along the way from the time that you started mm -hmm. until now? Um, to be honest, the, the biggest thing is building a team, finding people who are like-minded, who have, the, they share in the vision, because this industry is a lot about just getting in and getting out, and you have to have almost this relentless perseverance for creating the most perfect finish and understanding and taking the time to do all of the layers underneath and to plan all those layers underneath to get that finish to just go in seamlessly it's like that's where all the work happens most of it you don't even see but to have somebody that wants to take that time to understand all those layers that's the hard part and meeting people who are like it's good enough like it's fine that bothers me. That's not the way it is. Like you should be at a hundred percent every time and not just when you feel like it. Okay. So here's what I'm getting from you. What I'm getting from you is that you are, and I just dug deep into what you just said. You are very good at communicating. Oh, okay. Because in order for you to get your vision mm -hmm. and to find a team yeah. that can understand your vision mm -hmm. and make your vision come to life, mm -hmm. you would have to be an extremely good communicator <laughs> not just a good communicator you have to be a communicator to another level right well, right and that speaks that speaks volumes to your work mm -hmm. right because if you look at your work obviously you're not the one that's doing that's all the right. work yeah. you're leading that right. but you've picked and chosen certain people mm -hmm. in order for you to make that thing come to life yeah um and to me that speaks volumes mm -hmm. Uh, of your character, mm -hmm. of your ability to select certain people. So you have, you must have very good judge of character. Uh, yeah, you must. <laughs> I'm you very must. trusting, but, yes. but I'm getting better. Yeah. Right. I mean, we all learn through <laughs> we the all process. Learn. We okay. all learn. Yeah. So, so now, so now that you're, you've come a long way, mm -hmm. uh, you've won a few awards uh, along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you've met some quite uh, <laughs> an impressive, <laughs> yes, an impressive number of people yes. uh, that are pretty famous. Yes. Uh, some of them are. <laughs> I, I, I can't always disclose that. <laughs> okay, so you can't disclose it? Okay, no worries. But, um, but I mean, you, you have a very impressive resume. Thank you. Okay, and your, um, your portfolio is, uh, I mean, I'm proud. I, I told my best friend mm -hmm. uh, when he asked me about you, I couldn't stop raving about you. Uh, so that's, that speaks a lot. Yes. Okay, so now with all the challenges you've met, mm -hmm. what is the biggest challenge mm -hmm. that you've encountered so far i know you i know you're under a lot of stress right now yeah uh, i i feel like there's there's lots of little ones and the problem is is that they compound right so um definitely finding the team but it's also getting your work out there um finding materials most of I've kind of just come to realize that when I imagine something, it's usually not built or ready for me to pick off the shelf. And that is challenging because of timing. Most of what I'm creating is a prototype. I have no idea if it's gonna work. I'm problem solving it as I go, but we're already putting it into the reno, so it has to work, right? So the challenges are, um, it's high pressure because it's highly precise work. Um, you don't get many opportunities to do it twice because it doesn't fit in the schedule. And, and I make, 
big promises. And then I have to figure out a way of delivering it. And you make it work. Yes. You make yes, it work. Yes. Okay. No that's... matter how much sleep I lose, I make it work. <laughs> so, so, then, so then now that you've grown and now you're growing, uh, what's your ambition? That's a tough one. A lot of people ask me that and they say like, what's your five year plan? Mm -hmm. But for me, um, my goal is to have built a team where we, we get it and we're, we're working like a well-oiled well machine and every project we do is, it's not that it's bigger than the, the last one. It's that there's always an element of like, hell yeah, we did that. Like no one else could have done that or no one else wanted to do that we came in and did it. Um, and to have a team that, you know, right now we're in this growth phase of being able to take on much bigger projects. But once I kind of stabilize that team, that that's really the goal. And then I'm sure there'll be even more growth. But for now, it's just trying to stabilize everything. And now you're in the process of recruiting more people. Yes. yes okay. Because yeah. because you're multiplying your... Yes. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I, you know, I do... We have a wait list and it does annoy people to go on the wait list. And unfortunately, like some people wait on the wait list for a year, a year and a half, you know. Uh, some people don't wait and I don't know how they sneak into it. But uh, <laughs> but I would like to be able to take on more projects, but I have to do it in a very boutique renovation sort of way. And I can't dilute the process and I can't dilute the experience for the client. So creating a team that really believes in the same vision that we have, you know, where it's 100% all the time and the client experience is so important for us that we're here to not only take your vision, but we're here to elevate it to a level you couldn't even imagine. That That's our job in it, right? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so you, so you don't have a specific three to five year plan. No, okay. because when I started this business, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, Google, how to start a business. Um, wow. okay. I, I need to yeah, write a business sure, plan. Like, like I, I literally had no idea. I have no business training. Okay. So I thought, okay, I will start a, a business. So I wrote a business plan and I thought, okay, in year three, um, I will hire my first person. I had hired my first person by month three. By year three, we were nominated in eight categories of international design and architecture awards, including like best design firm in the world. So to say where I'll be in three years is is ridiculous. Like one of my personal like dream come true is almost happening right now. I don't want to jinx it, but mm -hmm. I thought that that would be a 10 year plan or mm -hmm. to even sit in the world's like great, to sit amongst the world's greatest design firms mm -hmm. to me was a 10 year plan. We're going, going there in, in, in six weeks. Like it's just, wow. it's crazy. So I have stopped thinking about where I could be and where I will be. It's just, you have no idea. Well, I mean, I have somewhat of an idea. <laughs> I mean, I do see your posts and, and for those people that are going to go see your posts, they're going to have a slight idea. Um, I know that, um, I know that you do have really big dreams mm -hmm. and you do want to get, you know, to a really big place, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you're not shy about mentioning it. No, okay, no, so, very ambitious. <laughs> yeah, so, so okay, so now with with your big dreams, and you started not knowing how to even do a business plan. Right. What is the, let's say, some advice that you'd give women in, in specific, in particular, mm -hmm. about uh, how would they approach the way to follow their dreams? Yeah, so early on in my career, I was given some really good advice and it's actually advice that I've really tried to, to live by. And actually, anytime I've wavered, it's it's done me wrong. But after, in about year two, I was given the advice that you do everything on vibe. And from that moment on, that's exactly what I did. Because when you're starting a business, everybody tells you the way you start your business. You know, these are the hours you should work. If someone calls you at 11 p.m., tell them that you don't answer the phone after six. And all of these rules that they will put on your business. Um, and for me, I just, I did what I felt was right all the, all the time. And if a client needs me and it's 11 p.m., I will pick up the phone. Or if there's a problem I need to solve and I, I don't know, like I, I just, it's the perseverance that you just keep doing what you feel is right. But the difficulty is like everybody will give you this advice of what to do and what not to do, but you, you should try it, but you should do these mini experiments. You should try their advice and the minute it doesn't feel right or if it backfires and, and a client has a terrible experience because they couldn't get a hold of you because it was after six o'clock, change it, you know, pivot. You're small uh, as a start, as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, you have the ability to adapt so quickly, pivot every time it's not working and try something else. That's the, and the mistakes that you make, 
put it into your lessons learned. That's the biggest thing that I do. If I make one mistake, I will make that mistake once, but I'll never make it again. I will make a point of getting to the root cause, and that's probably the engineer in me. Mm -hmm. I'll make a root cause analysis of why it even happened and put a preventative measure as best I can so that no one ever has to feel that mistake again. But the thing is, every job is bigger than the last. It, it, there are always prototypes, and there's always an element of, we're figuring this out live. So it's always scary, but the end result with that much risk in it is huge reward. And if it's not working, we pivot, we problem solve, we change it. Okay, so then what I'm trying to get from you is that if you were to give an advice to, let's say, a girl growing up, and she wants to, I'm sure a lot of girls look up to you and they want to do something similar to you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they, they are. Uh, or, if they, or if they're not, they will. They will. They will. Yeah. Um, and they're looking at you, they say, okay, I want to do something like you. Um, so you're basically, you're, what you're basically you're trying to say is, is follow your instincts yes. yeah. uh, and then take advice mm -hmm. as it applies to what you can do at the current moment. Yes. But if it doesn't actually work, pivot. Have to pivot. Yes. Pivot and change until something does work. Yes, and right. you're saying that's the, that's the freedom that entrepreneurship or, or business mm -hmm. actually affords you. Yes. All that, all the freedom of movement. Yes, because what works for your business will not work for somebody else's. And when I was very used to engineering where it's very black and white, it's all calculations. And, and my specialty was thermodynamics and fluid dynamics. It's all calculations. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden you're in this industry where a lot of it is qualitative, right? Versus quantitative. And you get just so much advice from people, but you don't, you haven't got the business sense yet and the experience and the lessons learned to know that when something feels wrong, it is wrong. You don't have that gut feel. You right. might hire the wrong person five times in a row until right. you get to the sixth person. But what you have to do is be very aware of your surroundings and be very um, in tune with the decision you make and how it impacts your business. Was it good for your business? Was it good for your clients? Um, and put yourself second. I know that people are always like, like you know, work-life balance, but your business has to be the forefront because if you want to take all these breaks because you're an entrepreneur and you're going to, you know, take over the world, yeah, yeah. yeah. fly, fly private jets yeah. and all that jazz, yeah. You can't do that without doing the grind, mm -hmm. but you need to spend enough time in the clouds and the dirt to be able to do to do both. But it's building that instinct that's, I think, the hardest part. It's, it's going through all the mistakes, yes. right? You have to go through the yeah. mistakes, yeah. right? Without the yeah. mistakes, you're not going to learn. Mm -hmm. Without learning, you're not going to grow, yeah, exactly. right? And I'm sure you've done a lot of yes. both, Very people right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, you told me just uh, previously before we went on, uh, went on air, you told me that uh, you're going through growing pains right now, right. even right. through all your successes. Mm -hmm. So it just doesn't yeah. stop, but you're, but you're at another level. Exactly. Right now. Exactly. Yeah. The problems I have today are very different to the problems I had three years ago. Right. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Yeah. Now going back. So now what you know, knowing what you know today, mm -hmm. okay, what would you give the advice to the three, three, um, three years ago girl, um, Martha, mm -hmm. what would you give her in terms of advice uh, that you would have done differently? Um, I think before, if I could go back in time... I think about this a lot, um, but it's difficult because I'm a firm believer that you make, you have to make the best decision that you can with the information you have at the time. And at the time, you don't have the instincts built up. You don't have, you don't even understand the right people to hire or the right clients to have. And you'll, you'll go through those learning lessons or the right projects to take on. Um, but I think that three years ago, to be honest, the only thing that I would tell myself is just to keep going, just to keep persevering through it because you have to do the grind. And only because I've done every job that I guys in construction have to do, that's the only reason that I know how to do it. I've done every job within Hedgeford and Berkeley to know how to do it. Mm -hmm. it there, there isn't anything that I wouldn't do for the survival of my company. Mm -hmm. It's actually didn't, I actually didn't expect you to say anything different. I, yeah. I swear. Actually, I was expecting you to say those words. Yeah. And I would, be, I would have been surprised if you said anything different. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Somebody actually just gave me really good advice. And they said, you remind me of me when I was young. And the advice that I would give myself and the advice I give you is um, have more fun with it and enjoy mm -hmm. it. And I, mm -hmm. I was literally thinking this weekend, how am I supposed to enjoy this anymore? I don't know how I'm supposed to enjoy this. Like it's- You're, it's, such, it's, you're at a level right now where you're enjoying it so much. You're like, yeah. you're like is there another level? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like, what can you do to make it funner? I guess like you just, I don't know if that's a word, but you you <laughs> just, <laughs> but, but it, the thing is, I always think that as an entrepreneur, 
the amount of emotions that you will go through in a 48 hour period mm -hmm. is more than some people go through in a lifetime. I feel you. Right? Like you are, you know, on, on like cloud nine and you are, uh, you are just like, can this get better? And it might be because like, I just got the best project ever. I'm mm -hmm. working with the best client ever. Mm -hmm. My team is amazing. You're like, like something that I'm literally like, you get this, this adrenaline, right. you know, these, this goosebumps yeah. that you will have never mm -hmm. experienced before, mm -hmm. but then come the lows and those lows where you fall flat on your face, right. you know, you miss a deadline or, or, or something. I actually don't miss deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> she actually does not miss a deadline. And that is what separates her. That's a little plug for her. She, that's what separates her from, I'd say, 99.9% .9 of all contractors. She does not miss a deadline. No, I don't. No. No. But keep going. Sorry for interrupting yeah, you. Yeah. Um, but there's times or, you know, or just something that doesn't happen. A lot of times in the growing pains that I've had is because when I say I'm going to do something, I just do it. And I, I also just assume or I believe that when somebody gives me their word and they say, Martha, this will be done, I guarantee it. I don't have to think about it because you're a person of your word. And when that breaks down, that causes a breakdown in my system and understanding how to control that or understanding how to, to get through that or change or pivot or whatever I need to do. Mm -hmm. Those days where I feel hopeless, like what am I going to do now that, you know, this isn't going the way I need it to go or, or this didn't work out the way I needed it to work out that hopelessness is unparalleled because you are the only person running your company and you cannot right. you you can't lean on someone else to say like you know let's say that i wanted to hire somebody that i thought was going to be phenomenal for our company but they want to go somewhere else mm -hmm. that hope of being able to work with them and then being gutted by not being able to there's no one in my company that i can go to and say like oh that sucked you know i don't even know what to do now and then they're gonna say it's okay because i've got this and this lined up no one does that for you. Right. You you because are the top. That's right. Who does? It's right? your vision. It's, it's your, your vision. Baby. You when when you are, you have to carry that momentum, whether you feel it or you don't. And and when you're at rock bottom, it's it's hard sometimes to be like that's okay. I'll just pick myself up and everything will be great again. But when you're when you're flying high and and you are just in the clouds, there's nothing that can stop Absolutely. you. But and I felt that before too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So then, when you are crashing yes. or when you've yes. crashed yeah. and you are on a rock bottom, mm -hmm. what gets you to to get back up? Um, to be honest, is what I do is a lot of like mind over matter. So it's okay. These are the things that I need to action. This is what I need to get done. And there's no, I take the emotion out of it um, because there's no point in wallowing at all. Um, and a lot of people depend on me to, you know, um, make this company successful. So I really don't have a choice. I don't have, I don't have, what's that word? The um, luxury of being able to just wallow in a bad day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I might call my friends and say, okay, we're going out and drinking wine. But after that, I have no choice. I signed up for this. I've got to pick it back up. And, and that perseverance is tested all the time, but you, you've you got to keep pushing. That's the thing. It's 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 not made for weak, weak people. That is no, for sure. No, entrepreneurship <laughs> is not. not it's very lonely. Yes. It's very yes. lonely and it's self-motivating yes. and it's self-driven, yeah. right? I mean, you can't rely on anyone else, like, just yes. like you said. Yeah. To, to actually get you to pick yourself up. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you want to look around. I mean, myself, sometimes you want to look around, like you're like, who's going to who's gonna tell me everything's going to be okay? And yes. you look in the mirror, you're like, that's the person. That's right. Right. You know what's actually really helped me is um, listening to really inspiring people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, whether it's like podcasts or YouTube is a really like, good go-to for me. Um, also, um, I've tried this new thing where um, it, it really makes me feel better when I do really nice things for people. And also, did you know that like even just seeing somebody do something nice for somebody else makes you feel better? So really? yeah, just being like a kind individual mm -hmm. also helps. But people, you mean, I mean, there's, there's a ton of people out there, but it's just somebody who will motivate you and will get you out of focusing on the little problem that doesn't actually really matter to thinking big and dreaming. Because when you're thinking big and dreaming, that's when you're inspired and you're excited and you can do anything. But 
that's that's how I have to turn it around. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because you can always you always have two choices yeah. at the end of the day. You always have the choice of looking at it the positive way, yeah. and you have the choice of looking at it the negative way. Yeah. That that's your choice. Mm -hmm. But it's always easier to default on the negative right. because that's it's right. easier just to stop and just to like yeah. you know drink wine or like eat chocolate yeah. or do nothing, yeah. right? But then when you pick yourself up and drive yourself, then you see the results and you're like, I'm glad I didn't actually just wallow in my misery. That's right, that's right. I, yeah, I always say it that your, your true character and your perseverance is tested on your bad days. It's not when you get up and you feel like you're gonna go to the gym and I'm gonna have this epic workout. It's tested the days where you're like, I don't wanna do this. I, why can't I just have the nine to five punch in, punch out? I leave my work at the office. Like, why can't I just have that? That's right. Those days where you are in the trenches with, with everybody, you know, mm -hmm. That's where like you persevere through that and you are always stronger. Always. But don't, don't you feel like because you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and you have total control of what goes on, mm -hmm. you feel like you can make the biggest impact. Yes, yes. And you can also feel that even if you're an employee, mm -hmm. you would never have that chance. Uh, well, when I was an employee, I always dreamed that I would be the director or like leading of whatever company I was in. So I always believed that I would have impact, but it wasn't until the last job that I was at, when I started working in an environment where no matter what I did, uh, the leadership, it just, they just, it was just not visionary. It was, there was no morale. It was just like, just hum drop, just kind of just, yeah. just do your thing, just do your thing. Clock, in, clock in, clock out. Clock in, clock out. Yeah. Not really interested. And, 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 and in that kind of environment, you, can, you can't make any impact. No, no. But, but as an entrepreneur, you can make the biggest impact yes. despite you having a job that can, you can, you can progress right. and make a little bit of impact. But That's at the end of the day, it's not your vision yes, you that, that you're going to drive that ship, That's right. Right? That's right? That's awesome. And so, okay, so we've, we've gone through the journey of you starting of you going through struggles, how you battle struggles, uh, what you give as advice for girls that also look up to you and for either just the general public. And a lot of people face, you know, <laughs> yes, bad days yes. and they, they want to look up to inspiration. Mm -hmm. And you're a very inspiring mm -hmm. person. I mean, and you actually use that mm -hmm. to lead your vision, mm -hmm. right? To inspire people. Okay. You've said it a few times, <laughs> yeah. right? That's right? Yeah. Right. Um, and, uh, That's and, I do, I have, right? <laughs> yeah, just, just, just that, just, you kind of wake up, you're like, I'll just inspire this person. Um, so who has been the biggest influence in your life? Mm. Um, it's, it's actually quite a few, few people, I would say. Um, I mean, in the, the business sense, I mean, you know, Gary V, I know a lot of people don't oh. like Ty Lopez, but you know, Ty Lopez and they're all great, they're, they're all great, they're all great for sure. Um, and I think that personally, um, being around really strong, um, individuals, my friends, you know, my husband, um, I feel like, you know, he makes me a better version. And, and I think that that is what you should always strive to be. Like you should always try to be the best version of yourself, whether it's through, you know, perseverance to always do the right thing or, or whatever. But I mean, I, I say I try to do the right thing, but it's, it's hard. You, you do you just, the you right just, thing. You just do what's to, what's That's to right. you the right, right thing, right? That's right. Um, I, I really believe there's not really a right thing. Yeah, I really exactly. believe there's a right thing for you. For you, exactly. And so as long as you're putting your heart into it, mm -hmm. then that's right. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe. Mm -hmm. So so the inspiring people you look up to are people like Gary Vee, people yeah. like Ty Lopez. Yeah. You have a very strong support system that you just mentioned. Yes. Definitely. Your husband. Definitely, yeah. Um, my parents, um, most of the time, they're just like, I'm not really sure even what you do all day. Um, you know, my dad offers to help me with the business. I'm like, I don't think that you understand where the company is right now. Um, yeah, and they're still always like, you know, come over for lunch. I'm like, I'm in like 18 hours of meetings today. <laughs> but they think, they think that because I run my own business that I just like, right, I don't know, hang out at home all day. Stuff. Yeah. Um, but, but I'm sure they're yeah. very I mean, I, I would like to hope so, but it, it definitely is the classic, like, you know, I know that you got 98% on the test, but what happened to the other 2%? Right. That's, that's my parents are the same. Always. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Um, and I do and the same, same with myself, but. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm guessing that's how you were brought up. <laughs> yes. Right? And that's yeah. what shaped you to the person that's you right. are today. Yeah. Okay. So what's the next big thing? I know we talked mm. about ambitions. Yeah. But if you can kind of 
give a little bit of a glimpse mm -hmm. as to the people that are listening and mm -hmm. people that are watching. Mm -hmm. What is the next big thing for Martha? Um, uh, project wise? Or, for, for, or what am I doing? For anything oh, else. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny because when I think about like, well, personally, or um, I would say like, you know, business, I mean, business, we've got just insane projects coming up that are beyond my wildest dreams. Um, working with other CEOs who are so inspiring because they're 20 years ahead of me. That's the biggest thing. Like whoever your mentor is needs to be many, many steps ahead of you. Um, you need to aspire to be like them, you know? Um, but yeah, personally, I think, I mean, I, I really don't know. I'm, I'm most of the time in disbelief that I'm not still at my nine to five because I literally almost didn't do it. I almost just stayed there. Mm. And it was really a mix of people saying like, go out and do your own thing. And people being like, it's not so bad. It's a steady paycheck and you should like the nine to five. And I didn't know anything else. I'm not an entrepreneur. I didn't, I didn't know any of these things. Um, so yeah, I think that for me, for the next, I guess in the future, maybe a little more time off, but maybe just some relief of, you know, growing the team and, and having a, a stable team that can really shoulder a lot of it with me because the projects are just getting too big, <laughs> too big for me to be That's, that's on actually my own. a really good problem. <laughs> yes, yes. That's a great problem. Yes, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Martha, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Um, I know you were nervous a little bit uh, in the beginning, but as uh, all of you can tell, she did beyond amazing. Um, she's a joy to listen to. She's a joy to be around. She's very inspir uh, inspiring, very inspirational. Uh, I really hope you uh, you come back to yes. Discover with Spinati. Um, and, um, and guys, make sure you go check her out. Uh, her tag is this, this is her tag. And uh, you also can check her, you have a website too, I right? Do, okay, do. I'll be putting her website in the, in the description in the below, in the box below. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Thanks again for tuning in. This has been episode number three with Discover with Spinati. And stay tuned for episode four. Thank you.